Hello, and welcome back to Tuesday Tech Tips with Mr. Panic. Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Sheets to make a crossword puzzle. Now, a crossword puzzle is a good project you can create for a class to help you with vocabulary or just something fun to make to challenge your friends or family members. If you don't have access to Google Sheets, you can make a crossword puzzle using Microsoft Excel or create a table in Google Docs or Microsoft Word, or even go low tech by using a piece of graph paper. What we really need is a way to put letters in a grid. Creating a word search can be done in just seven steps. One, create a list of words. Two, place words in a grid. Three, organize your list of words into two sections, down and across, and then number them. Four, create clues for your words. Five, put numbers in the puzzle. Six, color in the empty spaces. And seven, remove the words and print and send it out electronically to your family and friends. For the puzzle I will demonstrate today, I picked the topic of St. Leo School. I'll also try to come up with a list of about 20 words, which is a good starting point for me. As I mentioned before, we can always add more or take a word out if we don't have room. Let's see here. Once you've created your list of words, you can move on to the next step, placing your words in a grid. This part can be a little challenging, and if you like puzzles, it's kind of fun. Really, when putting the words in, you have to remember that words will either go down, this or across like this. You will want to try and link a common letter between words or cross them. So having a word going here and then having a word going this way, so we're crossing. You have to leave a space between letters going in the same direction. In other words, you can't have two words going across the grid with no space between them. Otherwise, people might think that there's another word that isn't part of your list and get confused. This is also a good time to set up your grid for the letters to go into. I'm going to make a 20 by 20 grid, which is plenty big to fit all the words I came up with. If your list of words is smaller, you can try a 15 by 15 grid. The boxes or cells in Google Sheets look like little rectangles. When you first create a Google Sheets file, you can make them more narrow by selecting the columns and then moving your mouse between the two letters at the top and click and drag to make your mouse look all of them the same width. So let's try that. I move my mouse up to the letter B and click and drag 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a good place to start and then maybe we can do 10 more. So now I'm going to move my mouse between the two letters and it doesn't really matter which two letters. As long as my mouse turns into a two-headed arrow, I can then click and drag my mouse over to the left to make it the, about the same width as the height, so it looks like a little square. There you go, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and try that again. I'll move my mouse up to the letters at the top and click and drag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. I'm going to move my mouse again between any of the two letters. My mouse will turn into a two-headed arrow. And I'm going to click and drag again to the left to make it up approximately a square shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Once you have your grid set up the way you like it, you can begin to place your list of words. I like to start off by placing the bigger words first. It makes it easier to link or cross the other words if there's a larger number of letters to work with. When you're placing your words on the grid, it really doesn't matter if you type or if you're using a piece of paper to write. Your letters in uppercase or lowercase, as long as you remember to have just one letter per square.
Once you've finished placing all of your words into the grid, you will want to organize the list of words you were working from into two separate groups, the words that go up and down and the words that go across. When you have the word list organized, you should number them. This way, you will know which number to use to identify the space, the letters go, and to match up with your clues. Each group will have their own set of numbers. So let's start off with the cross. Now let's move on to down. It is now a good time to come up with a list of clues to help people guess the word you want them to put into the squares. I'm going to place the clues next to my word list to help me remember what word I'm creating the clue for. Your clues can be easy or difficult, but remember who you're making the puzzle for. You don't want to make it too hard if you're planning on giving it to your younger siblings or friends. When you have all your clues completed, you will want to number the words in the puzzle to match the clues. You will want to click on the box where the first letter of the word is and just type in the number. If you're using Google Sheets, when you type, it will automatically replace what is there so you don't have to remove the letter if you don't want to. You will want to do all of the across words first and then move on to down or do all the down words first and then move up to the across. So let's begin. One across. One. Okay. Oh, as I'm numbering them, I'm realizing that I might need to rearrange the word order so the numbers match up correctly. In this case, because I use the first letter of a word to connect two words together, like Catholic and classroom, I have to use the same number for both. For example, one down, which is not classroom, needs to be one across, which is Catholic. If you're using Google Sheets, it's an easy thing to fix by using Control X or cut and paste Control V. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to move all of these down because I need to have a new number one. So I'm going to use Control X, turn the spot below it, and Control V, and it moves down. Next, I'm going to select the word that needs to move up, classroom, Control X, above, where it belongs, and then use Control V. Now I can take all the other ones that need to be moved, select them. X, on the spot, move them up, and then use Control V. All I have to do is renumber them. One, and there we go. So let me finish typing in the rest of my numbers. Once all the numbers have been placed, you can then fill in the blank spaces of your grid with a darker color. In this case, since the topic is St. Leo's, I'll use a dark green. You can select the cells by clicking and dragging over them, like 
this and then clicking on the paint bucket up here that says fill color, click on the drop down, and I'm going to choose a dark green. I would recommend staying with just one color so it doesn't become too confusing. Once you have filled in all the blank spaces with color, you can select the entire grid and change the font size to something smaller, like an 8, and change the alignment to left and top. To change the font size, click and drag over the cells, like so, go up to the top where the number 10 is, click on the little drop down triangle next to that, and in this case we're going to choose an 8, so it makes everything just a lot smaller. Now, what we want to do is make sure that all the numbers and letters appear in the upper left corner of the cells or the boxes. So to do that, again, keeping it selected, you're going to take your mouse, go up to the word format on the menu bar, go to the word align, and since it's already left, we could leave it that way, but let's click on it again to make sure the numbers move over there too. Next, we're going to go back up to the word format, go back to the word align, this time choose the top. So we're repeating that process. Now, all we have to do is remove all the letters from our crossword puzzle, as well as remove all our words here, so that way we're not giving away the answers. So let's take a moment to do that. And, as I mentioned before, it's a good idea to remove all the words over here for our across and down clues. We don't want to give the answers away. And to move these over, we need to select them like we did before. Use Control X to cut, and click on the box next to it, and use Control V to paste. Do the same thing for the down ones. And there we are. And to make this look a little bit nicer, we can get rid of our starting words. And there's our crossword puzzle. So now it's all ready for you to either share it with your friends or print it off and share with your family. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial on creating your own crossword puzzle using Google Sheets. Thanks for watching. And if you have any requests for future tech tips, please leave them in the comments section below.